Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Rabbi zidni ilma, Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa hlul lugdat min lisan yifku qawli illa ma la sahla illa ma ju'abtu sahla min wa'ta tajul hasna shi kasarim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. So before we start our paper, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us. We are doing May, June 2023, variant 22. Alright, so the first question that we have over here is find the temperature that is 8 degrees colder than minus 5 degrees. Alright, so what you guys will be doing you will be doing negative 5, negative 8. So the answer would be negative 13. Now for some students who are still confused, it says find the temperature that is 8 degree colder. So I will be making a bar for you. For example, it's already 5 degrees, negative 5 degrees. Now it's 8 degrees colder. So you will go 8 steps further below. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So it's negative 30. I hope you understand this one. Moving on to the next question. The next question says that there are two prime numbers in this list. Work out the sum of those two prime numbers. Look, prime number is any number that does not come in any other table except the table of 1 and its own table. So if you look over here, which numbers are prime numbers? The numbers that are prime numbers are 47 and 61. So, and the question said sum of these two prime numbers. So 47 plus 61 will give you 108. All right. Moving on to the next question. It says, on 10 days, Stephen records the number of minutes he has to wait for a train. Complete the stem and leaf diagram. So look. The most important thing in stem and leaf diagram is to look at the key. So over here we have 0 and then after 0 we have 1. This represents 1 minute. If I write 2, it represents 2 minutes. If I write 3, it represents 3 minutes. If I write 1 over here and I write another 1 over here, 1 and 1 combined, it would represent 11, 11 minutes. So now if we look at the question, 1 we have already written, 3 we have already written, note we have to write the smallest number. So we have 4, okay, then we have 5, okay, then we have another 5, okay. Do we have any other single digit number? Yeah, we have 8, okay. Next we have two digits number starting with 11, so I will write 1, then I will write 2 which means 12. Then I will be writing, we don't have any uh, digits starting with 1 now. Now I have 23 and 24. So 3 and 4. So this is how you will complete your stem and leaf diagram. Now the next question says find the median. Median is the middle number. So basically n plus 1 divided by 2, that's the formula. Okay. So if you look at it on 10 days, how many numbers are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So you would say 10 plus 1 divided by 2, which means 11 divided by 2, which is 5.5. This is not your answer. We have to calculate 5.5. 5.5 means the fifth and the sixth place. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all right, fifth and the sixth place. So this means 5 plus 8, which is uh, 13, divided by 2, because we took two numbers, so it's 6.5. 6.5. Okay, moving on to question 4, it says the distance from town A to town B on the map is 3.5 centimeter. The scale on the map is 1 is to 250,000. Find the actual distance in kilometers from town A to town B. So first of all, my recommendation to you all is write over here scales. S, let me write it over here instead. Let me write it over. Scales and maps. Scale is 1. 1 centimeter represents 250,000 centimeter on the actual map. Now, on the map, the distance is 3.5. Find the actual distance in kilometers. So we do not know the actual distance. What we are going to do, we are going to cross multiply this. X is equals to 250,000 
multiply by 3.5 let me take out my calculator 250,000 multiply by 3.5 it's 875,000 x is equals to 875,000 this is not your answer why because this answer is in centimeters from centimeters to meters you will first divide it by 100 because we want to convert from centimeters to meters so that's going to be divided by 100. It's 8,750. So this is 8,750 meters. Now from meters to kilometers, you will again divide it by 1,000. So it's going to be 8.75 kilometers. This is your answer. Perfect. Moving on to the next question, it says, a spinner is spun. The possible outcomes A, B, C, D, the probability of spinning is shown. Complete the table. Look, guys, total probability is always equal to 1. Okay? So this means just write x over here. 0 0.2 plus x plus 0 0.05 plus 0 0.35. This is equal to 1. So let's just add up all the numbers. 0 0.2 plus 0 0.05 plus 0 0.35 it's 0 0.6 so x plus 0 0.6 is equals to 1 x is equals to 1 minus 0 0.6 because we are shifting 0 0.6 over there the sign will change into negative x is equals to 0 0.4 okay moving on to the next question it says the universal set is x's are all the values from 1 all the way till 20 so x is greater than or equal to 1 and less than or equal to 20 e is even numbers m is multiples of 5 so for our own e's let's write all the even numbers 2 4 6 8 10 12 14 16 18 20 and m is the multiple of 5 5 10 15 20. Now it says number of elements in M. This N means number of elements. So how many elements are there in M? 1, 2, 3, 4. So your answer will be 4. Now it says find the elements in set E intersection M. E intersection M. So what does it mean? The ones which are common. So which numbers are common? If we look, 10 is common. We have 10 in both. Then we have 20 in both. So the intersection is 10, 20. So I will write just 10, 20. All right. Next it says, y is not equals to e. Write down the possible value of y. So look, in e we have all even numbers. So if y is not equal to e, it means that y is not an element of e. So y can be anything like 1, 3, 4, 5, 7. So let's say just write 7. It's my favorite number. So next question. It says, without using a calculator, work out 4 upon 7 divided by 1 whole 5 upon 21. So look, first of all, let's change 1 whole 5 upon 21. 21 multiplied by 1 is 21, plus 5 is 26. So 4 upon 7 divided by 26 upon 21. Yeah, 21 plus 21 multiplied by 1 is 21, plus 5, that's 26. Now, 4 upon 7, we will change this multiply sign into, divide sign into multiply and reciprocate. So this becomes 21 will go up, 26 will come down. It becomes 21 upon 26. Now make your life easy, guys. 7 ones are is 7. 7 threes are is 21. 2 twos are is 4. And 2 thirteens are is 26. So this becomes 2 upon 1 multiplied by 3 upon 13. So this becomes 2 multiplied by 3 is 6. 1 multiplied by 13 is 13. So the answer is 6 upon 30. Next question says solve 30 upon x is equals to 6. So 
30 is equals to 6x all right because 6 went up there and multiplied x went up there and multiplied with 6 now we can say 6x is equals to 30 x is equals to 30 divided by 6 x is equals to 5 yeah x is equals to 5 next question is part b so 11x minus 3 is greater than equal to 2 bracket 2x plus 9 11x minus 3 is greater than equal to 2 multiplied by 2 that's 4x because it's 2 multiplied by 2x plus 2 multiplied by 9 is 18 now I will shift the 4x over here and shift the negative 3 over here this becomes 11x minus 4x is greater than equal to plus 18 plus 3 look signs have changed never forget the signs most students forget the signs don't forget the signs please 11x minus 4x so this is 7x is greater than equal to 18 plus 3 18 plus 3 is 21 so x is greater than equal to 21 divided by 7 x is greater than equal to 3 all right because x is greater than equal to 3 and the question says solve you can say x can be 3 or 4 or 5 or 6 it's 3 or bigger than 3 so let's say it's 5 like you know or 7 7 is my favorite number now we have f is the point such that 1 comma negative 4 fg is 8 negative 3 gh is negative 12 35 so the first question is 3 multiply by fg so what we will do 3 multiply by what's the value of fg it's 8 and negative 3 so this becomes 3 multiply by 8 is 24 3 multiply by negative 3 is negative 9 so it's 24 negative 9 okay also in this questions my bad my bad 5 won't be your answer I just realized it's solved so it's going to be this this is going to be your answer x is greater than equal to negative 3 only this is going to be your answer moving on it says fg plus gh all right so fg is 8 negative 3 plus gh is negative 12 35 so what I'm going to do now 8 negative 12 I will subtract 8 from 12 it's negative 4 and negative 3 plus 35 that's positive 32 33 34 35 yeah so this is going to be answer we do not simplify or we don't do anything this is not fraction moving on to the next question it says the coordinates of the point G okay first of all look we have fg fg means og minus of all right so let's write down the value of fg it's 8 negative 3 is equals to og we don't know so we say x y minus of it's 1 negative 4 okay we will shift this over there so let me write it over here for now x y is equals to 8 negative 3 plus 1 negative 4 this becomes 8 plus 1 is 9 negative 3 negative 4 is negative 7 so this is going to be your answer for the point g so you are going to write it down like this 9 comma negative 7 all right moving on to the next question it says find the magnitude of the vector gh so what's gh negative 12 and 35 so you will say gh is equals to under root negative 12 square plus 35 square okay so let's do 12 square because neg whenever you square a negative the answer is going to be positive anyways because for example negative negative is positive so it's this now we will under root so we get 37 so your answer is 37 all right 
So you got two marks. Okay, next question, question number 10. Describe fully the single transformation that maps A onto shape B. Okay, so if you look at this question, this is a shear reflection. How? If I make a line over here, y is equal to 2, look, the distance from here is 1. So is the distance from here is 1. The distance from here is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. From here as well, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. From here, the distance is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 as well. Here as well, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So the answer is going to be reflection at the point y is equals to 2. So you will say, because it's two marks, reflection at y is equals to 2. All right. So <clears throat> moving on to a next question, rotate shape A 90 degree clockwise from the point negative 1 comma 2. All right. So first of all, let's say from this point 1 2 3 4 you went negative 4 comma positive 1 all right so now what you guys will do you guys will switch the signs you guys will write 1 comma negative 4 and with the first sign with the first sign you will add negative so let me use the red color so this is now negative 1 and negative 4. So negative 1 and negative 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. That's our first point. Now if we look at the question, just give me one minute. Let me erase this and use my pen. Okay, from this point, negative 1, 2, 3, 4. Again, negative 4, and then positive 1, 2, 3. What we will do again, switch the signs, 3, comma, negative 4, all right? And with the first sign, add the negative number. So now, negative 1, 2, 3, negative 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Again, do the same thing. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that's negative 5. Let me make a box over here. Okay. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that's negative 5, comma 5. Again, switch the numbers and add negative with the first number. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now, last point negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, negative 7, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Again, switch the numbers, add negative with the first one. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So here we have it. We have rotated our graph by 90 degrees, all right? So we have made the rotation in large shape A by scale factor negative 2 from the center 2 comma 0. Okay. All right. Moving on to the next question. It says in large shape A by scale factor of negative 2 from 2 comma 0. For this, what I will do, first of all, I want to erase all of my previous working. I want to make space. I want to make space for my new working. All right. Okay. So first of all, it's from 2 comma 0. 2 comma 0 means 2 comma 0 means this point. Now, if you look at it, let me erase this as well. So let's call this point A, B, C, D. So from point A, for point A, it's positive 1 positive 1 and again positive 1. We multiply both of these numbers with negative 2 because the scale factor is negative 2. So it becomes negative 2 comma negative 2. 
from here we will go negative 2 1 2 1 2 so this becomes a prime then then we have positive 1 negative 1 positive 1 negative 1 we multiply both of them with negative 2 this becomes negative 2 comma positive 2 so 1 2 1 2 so this becomes B next we have this point negative 1 sorry positive 1 positive 2 so positive 2 and then negative 1 negative 2 negative 3 we multiply this with negative 2 this becomes negative 4 comma positive 6 so negative 4 is 1 2 3 4 positive 6 is 1 2 3 4 5 6 all right and the last point we have is positive 1 positive 2 positive 3 positive 4 negative 1 negative 2 negative 3 multiply this with negative 2 as well so this becomes negative 8 positive 6 so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 1 2 3 4 5 6 hence we have made the shape you guys can use a scale I haven't used one and hence we have enlarged our shape so that's how you guys do enlargement moving on to the next question it says the diagram shows a shape ABCD formed by the sector of two circles with the same center both 140 degrees okay both of them are 140 OC it's 3.2 and CB is 2.6 the area of the shape is given find the value of K okay the area of the shape so it says the diagram shows formed by two sectors so this is the this is the area of the shape that they are talking about so in this question what I want you guys to assume is that this is because we want to find the shaded area right so this is the whole thing okay so this is 2.6 plus 3.2 2.6 plus 3.2 that's 5.8 so first we will find the area of sector of the bigger sector we will find the area of the bigger sector big sector so it's 140 upon 360 multiplied by pi r square multiply by 5.8 square and we will subtract it with the area of the smaller sector the smaller sector is 3.2 it has a radius of 3.2 so smaller sector it's 140 upon 360 multiply by pi multiply by 3.2 square so once we subtract the bigger sector with the smaller this is the bigger thing and when we subtract it with the smaller we find this area all right and this is is equals to k pi so let's just put it in our calculator let's say one uh, my mistake 140 upon 360 multiply by pi multiply by 5.8 square and then we will subtract it with the area of the smaller one which is 140 upon 360 multiply by pi multiply by 3.2 square so we get 91 upon 10 pi is equals to k pi 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 will be cancelled out so k is equals to 91 upon 10 which you can write as 9.1 as your answer now let's move on to the next question it says one solution of the equation is a x square plus b is equals to 181 x is equals to 8 a and b are both positive integers greater than 1 find the value of b okay so basically it says a and b are both are both integers greater than 1 so let's say a is equals to 2 okay now we will find the value of b so a x square 
plus b is equal to 181. The value of a is 2. The value of x squared is 8. x is 8. 8 squared plus b is equal to 181. So this becomes 2 multiplied by 64 plus b is equal to 181. 2 multiplied by 64 is how much? I just, I'm very tired, so I don't want to make mistakes. 128. 128 plus b is equal to 181. b is equal to 181 minus 128. b is equal to 53. All right. Next, it says write down the other solution of the equation ax squared plus b is equal to 181. So in this question, it is asking you the other value of x. Look, x is square anyway. So if I write 8 square, the answer is 64. And if even if I write negative 8 square, the answer is again 64. For example, if I say 2 multiplied by negative 8 square plus b is equal to 181, it would become 2 multiplied by 64 again plus b is equal to 181 because minus 8 squared is positive 64. So 128 plus b is equal to 181, b is equal to again 53. So the other value of x can be negative 8. All right. Now let's move on to the next question. It says a, b, and c are points on a circle. A, B, A, B is parallel to D, C, and angle A, C, D is 32. Okay. The chords A, C, and D, we intersect at E. Okay. Find the value of X. So look in this question, this side is also 32. So we will make this triangle 32, 32, and this is, let's say Y. 32 plus 32 is equal to 64. So Y plus 64 is equal to 180 y is equal to 180 minus 64, y is equal to 116. So this side is 116 because this side is 116, x is also 116 because they are vertical opposite angles. Now it says find f inverse x. Okay. So instead of f of x, I will write y is equal to 5x plus 2, 5x is equal to y minus 2, x is equal to y minus 2 divided by 5. And now I will say f inverse x. Instead of y, I will write x is equal to x minus 2 upon 5. So this is your answer. Moving on to the next question, it says c is the point 5 comma negative 1 and d is the point 13 comma 5. Find the midpoint. Okay, so the formula for midpoint is x1 plus x2 upon 2 comma y1 plus y2 upon 2. So this is x1, this is y1, this is x2, this is y2. So x1 is 5 plus x2 is 13 upon 2, comma y1 is negative 1 and y2 is positive 15 upon 2. So 5 plus 13 is 18 upon 2, comma negative 1 plus 15 is 14 upon 2. 18 divided by 2 is 9, comma 14 divided by 2 is 7, so it's 9, comma 7. So this is your answer. Now we have find the gradient. Now the question is asking you to find the gradient. So in order to find gradient, we say m is equal to y2 minus y1 upon x2 minus x1. So what is y2? It's 15. 15, negative. What is y1? Negative 1 upon x2. x2 is 13, x1 is negative 5. 15, negative, negative is positive 1 upon 13, negative 5. 13, negative 5 is 8, but let me cross check it once again, because why not? Yeah, it's 8. So it's 16 upon 8, so the gradient is 2. Okay, now the question is find the equation of the perpendicular bisector. If this topic is hard for you guys, you can find my video of finding the gradient of perpendicular bisector and all. So it says find the equation of the perpendicular bisector of CD, give your answer. Okay. So first of all, we have al already calculated the gradient of CD. Whenever we are finding the gradient of a perpendicular line, we say M1 multiplied by M2 is equal to negative 1. So M1 multiply by m2 which we already know is 2 is equals to negative 1 m1 is equals to negative 1 upon 2 
so this is the gradient of the perpendicular line now we already calculated our coordinates as well which are 9 comma 7 so we already have m x is equals to 9 y is equals to 7 the equation is y is equals to m x plus c so instead of y write 7 instead of m write negative 1 upon 2 and instead of x write 9 plus c 7 is equals to negative this is 4.5 or you can say negative 9 upon 2 plus c so c is equals to 7 plus 9 upon 2 so 7 plus 9 upon 2 sorry is 23 upon 2 so c is 23 upon 2 so this is not your answer answer should be in the form y is equals to mx plus c so y is equals to the value of m is negative 1 upon 2x and c is positive 23 upon 2 done next question we have write 0 0.6 if you look at it if i there are dots on 2 and 1 so it means 0 0.6212121 so what I will do now, let's say x is equals to 0 0.6212121. Let me multiply this number by 1000. So 1000x is equals to 1, 2, 3. It's 621.2121. And only x is 0. If I multiply it with 10x, sorry, 10x is 6.2121. So, and if I subtract both of these numbers, 2121212121 is cancelled out. This becomes 990x because 1000 minus 10x is 990x upon, let me see, 621. Alright, you can do it like this 621.2121 negative 6.2121 so that's 615 x is equals to 990 sorry 615 divided by 990 let's calculate how much this is 615 divided by 990 it's 41 upon 66 so the answer is 41 upon 66 let's move on to the next question it says the diagram shows a triangle. The AD of the triangle is given work out. So look, it's very simple. AD of triangle is half AB sine C. Alright, and the AD is given. It's 2143. So half, the value of A is 92.5. The value of B is 71 multiplied by sine X. We don't know the value of X. All of this is equals to 2143. So what I will do... half sorry half multiply by 92.5 multiply by 71 that's 3283.75 okay so sine x is equals to 2143 divided by because when i will multiply this it will go over there and it will be divided divided by 328 3283.75 3283.75 x is equals to sine inverse 2143 divided by 3283.75 let's do it sine inverse 2143 divided by 3283.75 So it's 40.73 so your answer is going to be 40.7 all right 40.7 you can also write 40.73 if you want as well so make x the subject of the formula okay first of all c multiply by 2x minus 5 this will go up there and multiply is equals to 3x 2cx minus 5c is equals to 3x 2cx, I will shift 3x over here, negative 3x is equals to 5c. I will take x as common, x, 
2c minus 3 is equal to 5c x is equal to 5c divided by 2c minus 3 so this is your answer very easy four marks for free honestly yeah moving on to the next question it says m is inversely proportional to the square of d plus 2 look m is equals to k upon because it's inversely proportional d plus 2 don't stop here to the square of d plus 2 right square so the values are given use these values first so 0 0.64 is equals to k upon 3 plus 2 whole square 0 0.64 is equals to k upon 3 plus 2 is 5 5 square is 25 so 25 will go up there and multiply 25 multiply with 0 0 0.64 so k is equals to 16 all right k is equals to 16 now m is equals to 16 upon t plus 2 square we got the equation once we get the equation we plug in this value m is equals to 16 upon 8 plus 2 is 10 because t is 8 8 plus 2 8 plus 2 whole square m is equals to 16 upon 100 uh, 10 square m is equals to 16 divided by 100 so it's 0 0.16 all right guys moving on to the next part many students find this difficult i am going to tell you a technique which is i hope you guys find it easy so write this as 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 so in a you have the elements 1 2 5 6 in B, some people do it logically, some people just can't do it, so you can do it this way. B has 2, 3, 4, 5, and C has 4, 5, 6, 7. First, it says A intersection B complement. What is B complement? All the numbers besides B. So, all the numbers besides B are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So this is B complement. So what is the intersection of A intersection B complement? Which are the common numbers? 1. Okay, we will write 1, 2, uh, no, 6 and, and 6, 1 comma 6. Now it says 1 comma 6 intersection C. What are the numbers in C? 4, 5, 6, 7. So the intersection is only one number. One number is common. So 6 is over here. We will just shade this region get it oh, how many oh, oh we have still three more questions okay solve the equation 5 sine x okay so first of all you will say sine x is equals to negative 3 divided by 5 x is equals to sine inverse negative 3 upon 5 okay so sine inverse negative 3 upon 5 you get negative 36.86 since it's negative we have add sugar to coffee since it's negative it means it will lie over here and here so what was our answer 36.86 we will write 36.86 180 plus 36.86 that's sorry 180 plus 36.86 that's 216.8 6 216.8 okay 213.86 comma and then this point 360 negative 36.86 all right so 360 negative 36.86 which is 323.43 323.14 sorry 14 so you can say 216.9 comma 323.1 next question write as a single fraction this is easy 5 multiplied by 2x minus 1 plus 4 multiplied by 3x plus 2 
and you will write these two numbers together just like this. Don't multiply them, no need. We will expand this, this becomes 10x, 10x negative 5, sorry, negative 5. 10x negative 5 plus 4 multiplied by 3 is 12x plus 8. So this becomes 10x plus 12x is 22x, negative 5 plus 8 is positive 3 upon 3x plus 2 and 2x minus 1. This is going to be your final answer. Alhamdulillah, we are on our last question now. It says bag A and B each contain red sweets and yellow sweets. Anna picks a sweet and random. Ben picks the probability. Anna picks. Okay. Find the probability that Anna and Ben both pick a red sweet. Okay. So in this question, first of all, Anna picks a sweet. The probability that Anna picks a red sweet. So Anna, she picks a sweet. It's a red sweet and the other sweet is yellow. Anna picks a red sweet. It's 2 upon 5. And if she picks a yellow sweet, it's automatically 3 upon 5. Ben also picks a sweet, but we do not know the probability right now. Red and yellow. Let's say the probability of red is A. The probability of yellow is B. Now, the probability that Anna and Ben both pick a yellow sweet is 1 upon 10. It means we will multiply 3 upon 5 with B. So 3 upon 5 multiplied by B is 1 upon 10. Alright. So B is equals to, we will cross multiply. 5 upon 3 multiplied by 10 is 30. 5 upon, yeah, 30. So the probability that Ben picks a yellow sweet is 1 upon 6. If Ben picks a yellow sweet and if that is 1 upon 6, the probability of red sweet is going to be 5 upon 6. Now the question says find the probability that Anna and Ben both pick a red sweet. Both pick a which sweet? Red sweet. So this is red and this is also red. So the probability is 2 upon 5 multiplied by 5 upon 6. Let's check it. 2 upon 5 multiplied by 5 upon 6. So it's 1 upon 3, the probability of picking a red one. So Alhamdulillah, we are finished with the paper. If I hope you guys understood everything. Best of luck. Please do like and subscribe. It would mean a lot to me. And if you have any questions, please comment below. Bye-bye.